In today's video, we will be salvaging components from a VCR and DVD combo unit. This video will provide a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to disassemble the device, as well as the useful components you can find within. This device was manufactured by JVC, and the specific model number is HRXVC33U. Overall, it took us one hour to disassemble the device, and another hour to depopulate the circuit boards found within. If you find this video useful, it would help us a lot if you smash the like button so we can make more useful videos in the future. Also, consider subscribing to our channel and tapping on the bell icon so you can be notified when we upload new content. As this is an educational video, make sure to add your comments, compliments, or complaints below so we can use your feedback to make better content. Now that that is out of the way, let's dive into today's video. The first step in accessing the components within this device is to remove the six screws that hold the metal cover to the chassis. It is also a good idea to remove the five small black screws which help secure the device ports to the chassis as it is easier to remove them now. With the top cover removed, we can see the DVD assembly, the video cassette assembly, part of the power supply board, as well as part of the main circuit board underneath. To access the circuit boards, we need to remove the DVD and video cassette assemblies by removing the screws around the perimeter. With the DVD assembly out of the way, we can see the power board with some useful components. There is a transformer and choke inductor, as well as some capacitors, diodes, and MOSFETs. Once the screws have been removed that secure the power board to the chassis, we will need to break the two small ribbon cables that connect the power board to the main board. With the bulk of the device components out of the way, we can see the main circuit board for the DVD-VCR combo unit and it looks a little barren. There are some clusters of electrolytic capacitors, as well as some crystal oscillators and a mode switch. This does not look like a very profitable salvage project, but we will press on and see what else we can find. To access the components in the front cover of the device, we will need to remove the eight screws which hold the circuit board to the plastic front cover piece. The DVD assembly contains a laser diode as well as a small motor and circuit board. To remove the circuit board, first, unscrew the four mounting screws holding the board to the assembly, then disconnect the three ribbon cables to free the board. We took 104 electrolytic capacitors out of the VCR DVD combo unit. These capacitors ranged in value from 0.33 microfarads, all the way up to 560 microfarads. The most abundant capacitors were 47 microfarads and 10 microfarads capacitors. To buy all these capacitors would cost a little over $25. We managed to remove a small collection of ceramic, polymer, and film capacitors. The two film capacitors are rated at 0.22 microfarads and 0.47 microfarads. There are three polymer capacitors with two having a value of 150 nanofarads and the other having a value of 82 nanofarads. There are also some ceramic capacitors ranging in value from 74 pico farads up to 100 nanofarads. There is also a surge absorber capacitor included in this image. Although there is less than $5 of salvage in these capacitors, we might use them in a project at a later date. There were three 1.1 milli Henry iron core inductors, as well as a choke inductor, found within the device. These components will give us slightly over $13 in salvage. The VCR and DVD combo unit used one transformer to reduce the main power supply down to various values needed within the device. These transformers can always be sold for a nominal salvage fee, or used for other projects. You can never have enough micro buttons. They are so useful for many projects and repairs. We managed to successfully pull a dozen of these little buttons from the device. Although these buttons are very cheap and will give us less than $3 in salvage, they are still worth the time to extract and set aside. We managed to remove four diodes from the VCR and DVD combo unit. All four of these diodes are SB240 Schottky barrier diodes. With a value of a little over $3, it is not much, but we will add it to our salvage. There were two flat green light emitting diodes on the front panel of the device. There were also two infrared receiving diodes and one infrared emitter. This salvage was a little more than 25 cents, but we figured we would throw them in our drawer of assorted components. We were only able to remove three transistors from the circuit boards without damage. 
All three of these components were BJT transistors with APMP junction. Transistors are generally cheap to purchase and these will bring in less than $2 in salvage. There were three MOSFET components within the VCR and DVD combo unit. There was an K2043N channel MOSFET, as well as an D2394 bipolar transistor, and an C5736 junction transistor. All of these MOSFET components will only equal around $7, but you can never have too many of these in your parts drawer. For some reason, we always pull a few cheap resistors out of the circuit boards in all of our projects. This time we took 4 with the largest one being 4.7 mega ohms, and the smallest one being only 0.27 ohms. The value is not even worth mentioning, but we will throw them in the resistor junk drawer. There were a total of 4 motors in the VCR and DVD combo unit. These motors ranged in value from just above $1, up to almost $10. These 4 motors can be sold for over $20. There were four sets of interface ports we were able to remove from the circuit board. Three of them are simple RCA ports, while one of them also includes a component out port. It is hard to place a value on these interface ports as prices range from $1 up to $4 per piece. We will just give an average value of $2 and see if we can sell them. There was a good selection of unique components found within the VCR and DVD combo unit. There was one GBJ4J integrated rectifier chip, as well as a mode selector and a few tape location detectors. We also safely removed the segment display as well as three wiring connectors which seem proprietary to JVC devices. We found an assortment of crystal resonators as well as some crystal oscillators. Then we found these light blue things. We have no idea what these are, so if you know what they do, please share it in the comments section. In addition to all of the components we have listed, we also found a large piece of aluminum heatsink, two crystal oscillators, two RF coil transformers, one fuse, an optocoupler, as well as one M1868D integrated oscillator chip. All of these components have a combined value of a little over $7, but will go up for sale on our eBay store anyway. If you are in the market for building your own death ray, you probably already know what this part of the VCR and DVD combo unit this is used for. This is the laser diode which is used to read the DVD discs in the machine. These diodes generally sell for around $15 so that is some extra cash for us. We always manage to salvage a good selection of screws from any device we disassemble. For this tear down, we found screws for securing in plastic, as well as screws for securing into metal. We also found some great rubber shock absorbers which are used to isolate the DVD unit from other vibrations. We never know what value to place on screws and fasteners, so $2 is what we picked for today's video. Whenever a device is disassembled that contains many moving parts like a VCR, there is always a certain level of springs that can be salvaged. Springs are a niche item and they are always good to keep around. It would not be time effective to figure out the value of these springs so 50 cents is a good conservative estimate. We found some decent nylon gears in the VCR and DVD combo unit. We really have no use for gears so we are going to accumulate as many as we can before selling them as a bulk order. We once again really do not know what type of value to place on these gears but we found out you can buy gears online for 10 to 13 cents per gear. With this in mind, we will say that these gears are a little more than $1 in value. This enameled copper wire is very common in VCR units. Although we do not have a use for this in our electronic projects, it works great for crafts. Hobby stores sell this wire for 12 cents a foot, and we have approximately 65 feet of wire on these two spools. This adds up to over $7 in enameled wire. The amount of wire we found in this device tear down was disappointing. These three pieces of ribbon cable are only worth a few pennies and really not even worth mentioning. Overall, there were not many useful components we could salvage from the VCR and DVD combo unit. We found a decent haul of capacitors and a few useful inductor coils. The motors, as well as the laser diode, have some value which increases our salvage profit, but generally speaking, we did not find many unique items. The device took approximately one hour to disassemble and another hour to depopulate the circuit boards. In total, we found slightly over $100 in components and scrap. Hopefully, this video has given you some insight into the useful and valuable components you can find in everyday electronic devices.
If you found this video useful, please do not forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and comment below. To get notifications on when we post more videos of how we are just scrapping by. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the ding dong bell to be notified when we upload new content. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.